Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hi, my name is Miss Paris and I'm a newly qualified primary school teacher here in the UK. Now for today's video, I realise I've been a bit absent so I just want to apologise for that. But hopefully it's going to be a really really useful one for a lot of you because today's video is going to be about potential NQT questions that you might be asked in your interview. Now I've had four different NQT interviews all of them ask me kind of different things, so I've tried to compile some of those questions together as well as include some of the questions that I personally prepare for just in case and as well as some questions that have been recommended by other teachers across multiple different social media platforms. So hopefully this will be really, really useful. I don't think I'm going to give example answers in this video simply because there's lots of questions that I want to talk to you about and I don't think I would have the time but also I feel like it's important to speak from the heart, speak from experience and obviously I can't do that for you, it's unique to everyone. So I'm going to split these questions up into multiple different categories, of course these aren't necessarily in any sort of order, however I am going to, well depends how long this video is, we'll see, but I might do this as a two-parter if it just gets too long. And I might, if it's useful for you guys, so let me know in the comments, I might try and create this into a Word document just so you can have easy access. So let me know if that helps. The first category I'm going to talk to you about today is questions about yourself. And I've got some notes in front of me, that's how I've labeled it, questions about yourself. So this includes things about, tell us about yourself, tell us about strengths and weaknesses that you have, what are your priorities during your NQT year, um, where do you see yourself in five years time, two years time, ten years time, whatever that is. And number five is how can you contribute to the wider school community or to the wider life of the school. So that could be anything from clubs or helping support a development in the curriculum or maybe helping to organise some kind of fundraising event for the year. I don't know, but maybe you've already done this in your training year and that might be something nice to include. The next category I have here is linked to the school in particular or the position you're applying for. For example, a very common one, similarly to when you're applying for a skits um, program or you know a uni teach training is why do you want to you know work for us or what do you like about this school in particular? or why do you feel like you might fit into this school? So this is where it really shows if you have done your research about the school or not. It's really nice to add some kind of key details that are very unique to that school or ones that you have read from the website because it shows that you care, you've done your research and that also you can apply it to yourself and say, this is why I would suit the school or this is what I particularly like about the school. Another one which is kind of similar um, is why do you want this job? You want to show something that makes you stand out, that makes you seem really passionate, that makes you demonstrate how much you care about children and how much you care about teaching and so forth. So similarly to your teach training interview, make yourself stand out, make yourself seem unique and don't give too many cliche answers. On every single school website there should be the Ofsted report available to you. So depending on what they were rated as, they might say, okay, our, according to our Ofsted report, um, we are currently graded as outstanding. How would you ensure that you maintain this level or these expectations um, in your classroom or as a school? Or they might say, we are currently um, requiring improvement and we need to work on the following areas. Duh, duh, duh. How might you support us in this? So definitely make sure that you read the Ofsted report because then you have an idea of what they're working towards what you need to make an emphasis in your classroom and in your answers because if they don't ask you this but let's say um, they need to work on their reading strategy across the school and you mention that when talking about your priorities and your NQT year, for example they might say oh wow so she's definitely in line with what we're looking for she knows how to support the school etc so you can kind of see where Researching the school comes in really, really handy when answering any of these questions. You can always link it to what you've read, to what the school is all about, and to what the school needs to improve on. Another question is, you know, talking about a certain policy that they have and that they're maybe trying to update it or 
if we were to update it, what do you think we could improve on? Or if you were to write this policy, what would be the key parts of it? What would be the most important thing for you to focus on? What would be your priority? And this could be anything from talking about attainment to assessment, or you know, if you're a secondary school teacher, a certain subject. So in one of my last interviews, I think, I was asked about the reading um, program, saying that you know they're really trying to improve their strategy for this, how would you do so in the classroom? So, you know, for reading or writing or comprehension or, you know, if it's related to SATs and you're in year five or year six, you know, how are you going to support them with that? Okay, we're not even halfway through. I've just looked at my notes and I'm like still scrolling. I'm like, oh dear. Okay, anyway, quickly, next category is related to personal practice in the classroom. So this could be multiple different questions, essentially anything that happens in the classroom they could ask you about. So if I were to walk into your classroom in the middle of a lesson, what would I see? You know, that could throw you off, you know, you don't want to say children learning. <laughs> um, you know, try and be creative, really put yourself into that position and that's why it's important to kind of think about these things first. Put yourself in that position, okay, what do I want to be a focus? What's my teaching philosophy about? Or will I want the children to be kind of discuss, discussing, having really important conversations, um, you know, working in teams or working in groups or, you know, this is really dependent on you. I'm not going to give you an answer. I'm just giving you example things to think about. But yeah, if they were to walk into your classroom, what is the first thing they would see? Or what would they see? This is also where you might be asked something um, related to TA. So what is the role of the TA in your opinion? Um, how do you effectively deploy support staff? Or what would be your response if a TA were to disagree with your opinion? Or disagree with what you just asked them to do? Another question that they could ask, and I wasn't sure whether to put this in the questions about yourself, but I don't know, is how does your degree or previous experience in the classroom help prepare you to be an inclusive practitioner or to deal with low levels of disruption or, I don't know, to deal with the high percentage of EAL children that we have in this school? How would you support them? You know, so they're kind of giving the opportunity here to link to previous experience, to anecdotes, to things that you've already kind of dealt with and for you to offer to them, okay, this is how I worked with all those EAL children, how I differentiated for them, how I supported them. Or there was this one time with this one child, they did X, Y, Z, and this is how I dealt with it. And since then, it's been a real priority to make sure that I deal with it in such a way that blah, 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 blah. That, you know, that kind of thing. So you can kind of see how we're linking experience with the future, but also you can mention the behavior policy. So if it was about low level disruptions, that kind of thing, you could say, well, I've read in your behavior policy that you do this, and in my previous experience, this is what we also did. So I have a lot of experience in managing behavior this way or using positive reinforcement. Another one, and I've had this a lot, especially in writing personal statements, how might you use technology in the classroom or are you proficient in using IT in the classroom? They might also ask you about, can you give an example of a lesson that went well or a lesson that didn't go very well? And, you know, link to that kind of saying, what would you have done to improve this lesson? Or what could you have done to make this lesson even better? They might ask you, have you ever taught a creative lesson or an outdoor lesson? You know, for example, if you're going to teach in forest school, it's important that you've had experience doing so. And if you have, Give an example, say how it went well, say what you did um, as it was your first time teaching. Then how did you plan for this? How did you plan for something you've never done before? And how did you then reflect upon it afterwards? And sorry, I've just realized I'm doing loads with my hands, but it's just, <laughs> it's just happening. Okay, another one kind of linked to one I mentioned earlier is, if I were to look at your planning, what would I see? Or can you give an example of a time where you managed behavior effectively? So, like I said before, make those links between their behaviour policy, your experience, what you would do in the future, how you reflected upon it. If you weren't sure of how to deal with it, then what did you do to make sure in future you were confident with it? Was it CPD, etc, etc. So you can see, you can almost prepare several different phrases, get together several different experiences that you could use in different contexts 
to kind of avoid you stammering in the moment or thinking, gosh, I can't actually think of one. Okay, I think this is going to be my last section for this video. In the next video, I will give you examples of questions for professional development, safeguarding, and all those questions around pupils, because as you notice, I haven't really said that much about it. So the last section for this video that I'm going to do is around other professional responsibilities. That's kind of what I've categorized it as. Obviously, I think I mentioned in the beginning, but these won't be these questions won't be in a particular order or particular categories. They might just kind of say it as it goes, I suppose. And also they might ask you lead up, follow on questions, depending on what you answered. So these are just kind of as a guideline, just some ideas for you to think about. Um, but yes, don't think that these are going to be the questions. There might also be questions that I haven't mentioned. So other professional responsibilities, this includes kind of the wider community and a lot about parents. So how would you maybe deal with a parent that comes to you, um, you know, upset or angry or worried? You know, how would you approach them? What would you say to them? They might even give you a particular situation, ask what would you say to this parent to reassure them or to calm them down. They might also ask about a previous experience you've had with a parent or um, you know, how did you deal with that? Or they might say, how have you previously communicated with parents? So if you've never face-to-face -face spoken to them and you weren't involved in parent meetings, then maybe you could mention whether you've ever done a phone call home, if you're secondary, whether you've ever done like one of those positive postcards. Um, my brother sometimes gets them, he loves them. If you're primary, are you communicating with parents through Seesaw or another program like that to show them what they're child is doing at school, um, all these kind of things you can mention and if they do ask for a specific experience and you can't say anything then at least you can mention that. Say, I haven't however, I have done these things. Another really important one and as trainees you will have done this your fair share. How do you reflect on a lesson's effectiveness? So, you know, what do you do afterwards? Do you just kind of go, oh phew, that's over and done with, let's move on. Or do you know, do you sit and think, okay, I need to do this for this child next lesson because they really didn't get it. Or next time I should move these few children around because their behavior, you know, wasn't to my expectation. Or next time I think I'm gonna work with this group and the TA can work with this group to make sure we swap around a little bit, that kind of thing. Another question is how would you foster equal opportunities in your classroom? And link to this, how would you make all learning accessible? If we were to go back into home learning later on in 2021, how will you make sure that everyone can access the learning? How do you make sure that everyone is doing it and that they understand, for example? I think it's kind of difficult because obviously this is all new to us. Even experienced teachers, they're kind of, you know, getting used to this whole different system of virtual teaching. But I think where possible, try and mention how you have been using this time to your advantage or what you have been doing to be proactive during this time, including what you've been doing with the children. Okay, so with that, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been so long. I kind of don't feel like I can talk in front of a camera anymore. Um, but yes, next video will be kind of similar. It'll be about safeguarding questions, it will be about questions related to pupils and professional knowledge slash professional development questions. So if you want to catch that video and make sure you don't miss it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload. And also, because I haven't been on YouTube in so long, please make sure you like or leave a comment down below so that YouTube suggests it to other NQTs. If you are applying at the moment, I wish you the best of luck and really hope that you get that interview or that dream job. I have my fingers crossed for you and I will see you soon. Bye.